Good afternoon. Hope you're going to have a great weekend. Uh, it's about 46, 47, but there's a wind, so it sort of counteracts the slight warmth, and I could have worn more today. <laughs> so that's my, uh, my Thomas Jefferson report. For those of you who are looking for good news on the political front, our job numbers in America are up. There are indications that the economy is coming back. I think that those who are foot dragging in their support of Biden will feel better when they see things like a container of milk costs less and, than it is now, that uh, their gas is cheaper, the kinds of things that they see on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, those who are buying houses or want to will be concerned that the rate still, the base Fed rate is 5%. But uh, so uh, there are things on the move. And then uh, Biden is getting really good uh, <laughs> reactions from uh, women and uh, put them six points ahead of uh, Trump. Shouldn't be a surprise there. Should be wider. But the, the good news is starting to move in. Uh, the uh, I couldn't talk yesterday because I was with a client too late. It was dark. Uh, but uh, I'm out today. Uh, a little chillier than I want to be. <laughs> the uh, uh, Fannie Willis matter down in Georgia is cooking. She uh, submitted a short 176-page <laughs> brief on uh, her position. And she said, yes, uh, we've had a, an intimate relationship, but it wasn't before or at the time of his appointment. And it occurred afterwards. And there is no conceivable conflict that we can see. And uh, there's no basis for to remove uh, any counsel from this case because of that relationship. And that's that. Now, what the court does with it is another question. The Trump people may feel that they should sit on their hands, except for the uh, defendant in the, the case that's uh, raised this uh, question. I am beginning to feel, besides this, uh, why are we fiddling instead of setting the next trial? I, you know, you just, you just can't figure these people. <laughs> I have gotten delays in case. They always had to be legitimate. I always had to come in with witnesses and documents to justify it. And uh, these guys they just wave their arms. And I think it's because there's an apprehension by everybody involved to actually do the deed and get involved. And this isn't helped by the fact that in the D.C. Circuit, uh, on the use of immun on the uh, immunity question that's before them, that they were arguing, that seemed to be moving along quickly. Four weeks have passed and no decision. And what does that do? That starts delaying cases. And uh, the federal case that uh, Chutkin has is no longer on the court calendar to be tried on March the 4th. Now, uh, so this is really aggravating. And I'm going to raise it because we should put this at his doorstop. Our attorney general is a worthless piece of you fill in the blank for not having done anything for like two years. And luckily, the special counsel sees his mandate more clearly than the fellow who would pass for the attorney general of the United States. But all is not lost. And I don't know what the other jurisdictions are going to do, of course. But Bragg, who is the DA from Manhattan, he is in a position to go forward. And right now, the matter is scheduled for March the 25th. So uh, <laughs> Trump's not got a, a delay sequence that works yet. Now, going back to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeal and their failure to act, I, I don't know how you read the tea leaves on that. In this sense, there are three judges. Uh, one of them is Henderson. She was an appointee by W, that is Bush, uh, to the court. It'd be kind of ironic since Bush became president, in my opinion, because the Supreme Court ignored its role as an impartial arbiter and decided that politics motivated them to enter a decision making Bush the president. But I can't transfer that to Henderson. 
the uh, the other irony in my own case is that I uh, made an argument the other day, and one of the judges on the panel was Henderson, and she didn't uh, make a statement or ask a question, uh, and maybe she didn't feel she had to. You know, there's no requirement, so you can't read anything into that. It's also possible that there's an agreement by two. Somebody wants to file a dissent. That takes time. And if there is a dissent, <laughs> bear with me, there can be uh, a motion on bonk, meaning the entire D uh, D.C. Circuit could be asked to consider the case. So that's something to keep in mind. In the meantime, I've always said when I come into a case, uh, when you look at the judge you have, you have to decide, is the judge a noun or a verb? <laughs> judge sitting there, not acting. Judge, verb, acting, doing something. Uh, you may have heard that we, early this morning, uh, attacked sites in Syria, bombing runs, and the uh, near Damascus is at least one of them, <coughs> and the uh, UK joined us in the operation, as did France. Uh, so uh, this is probably, I would say, our first. The targets are supposed to be chemical weapon sites. I always wonder how you attack a chemical weapon site and not, <laughs> not create a worse problem for doing that, but there it is. The, uh, the other thing that uh, is, well, not, not main news, but you may feel as I do about this. Uh, the Rocky movies are, you know, the American dream. A pug gets a chance to be the champion. He uh, overcomes all sorts of diversity. He redefines winning by just lasting the entire fight. That's, that was the origin of Rocky. But in the sequences after that, he uh, managed to actually become champion. In the course of those movies, Carl Weathers, Carl Weather, who played Apollo Creed, was uh, a necessary element of the chemistry. I don't know him personally. He was an NFL linebacker. And since I don't follow the sports that carefully, even knowing that shows that he punched through my uh, kind of lack of knowledge from anonymity in any other case to the fact that he was in this movie. And from having been a, a, a fighting fan and uh, done some, some things in my own life, I, I found him fascinating to watch because his moves were... I guess they were choreographed, but he was he could fight. He knew how to fight. So and he and he was a good actor. So he's dead at seventy six. It's a shame. So uh I'm out and uh <laughs> I'm chilly and but it's nice to be out because I couldn't get out yesterday. So I'll probably see you tomorrow. I'll be on the on the road. There's a local story that annoys me. People are getting anxious about the fact we have dirt roads and they want to be able to change them. This is people come here to the country. They don't know a damn thing about the country. They don't care about the country. They don't care to see a single animal or to walk in a field that few have walked before. They just want to get from their house to their office at the fastest speed they can and they don't give a damn about the open country. I don't know if it's going to go there, but, you know, they say th people buy houses here that they can't afford uh, because they can't afford the expensive ones where they come from. So instead of having these isolated houses elsewhere, they come out here where we have dirt roads and there are open fields. They put down a house and then they try to change this to where they were, where they where they couldn't afford the mansion that they wanted, the McMansion. So they come out here, and what do they want to do? Pave the roads, kill the deer, tear down the trees. 
you know, price of everything, the value of nothing. <laughs> On so many levels, at an age, if you're alert, you could spend all your time trying to correct those who waste a world that has so many gifts that if left unchanged can be a great joy and salve and occupation for us when we're working out this coil we call life. But we don't educate about enough. And we live in a country where dumb is better. And at least among 30 or 40% perhaps, and we, we're going to become, we're going to be overrun by those who don't give a damn and can't think and don't know and don't value anything. So it's up to us, because there are more of us now, but that can change. It's up to us to carry the message that there is something special in the land and in nature, and that we should respect it. There's something important about people caring about each other, when many among us, including very many of our leaders don't care about anyone else except themselves. They spend all their time deceiving us, including Democrats. I'm a genetic Democrat, but I see it as well. And uh, we've lost sight of the standards by which we were and could become again a great nation. Right now we're ill. We're, we may not be on life support, but we're in a difficult situation. And if we don't reclaim this country in the individual events that are happening between now and the election and at the election itself, people shake their heads and they won't understand what happened. They didn't know what they had, so they don't know what they're losing. So, <laughs> I don't know where that came from, but, you know, I'm writing briefs and arguing and it... There's like a cross filtration between what I do as a lawyer in single cases and what I see is happening in trends in America. And I can see that we're fighting back. And I think Biden is. And we can't hold his character, if it's not ours, up when he's doing so much that is so good. And he's on our side. But it's hard to find people who are, who are Republicans, and that wasn't always true. And I know as a, a youngster, when even Nixon supported liberal policies, when he wasn't being totally deceitful. So I say uh, goodbye to you from my Cathedral of Trees, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.